I'm so excited because first and foremost, shout out to Twitch. The reason I'm saying shout out to Twitch is not just because I'm filming this here, but it's because my original intention was to film it here and it turned out to be my only available option. Why is that? It turns out if you have an Apple phone, I don't know how it is with you fancy Google phone. If you have an Apple phone, you can't record a video while having headphones and expect the sound that is being transmitted through your headphones to actually be captured in the video. It doesn't do that. It only captures with your speaker. They want you to download an app. So, like many things in the world, it's based on driving profits. Not mad at it. I love my iPhone. I've had it for many years. I digress. What I wanted to say is, before any of this happens, is good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Because regardless of where you're at, it might be a different time. I'm standing here on the East Coast right now with the 1994 Acura Integra GSR. I'm here to review it. This is my personal car that has a lot of sentimental value. So it might be some bias, but don't worry. I'm going to try my best to review this as I did before I bought it, which entails a lot of the reasons of why I own it. This 1994 Acura Integra GSR is a blessing to own. I have to say, it's a great car. It's not the fastest car, but it is a very fun car. I got it through personal help of my brother. Shout out to my brother. And it was meant to be for me because at 28 years old, she's standing very, very well. I've given some personal touch to it with the help of my A1 mechanic that I've had since I was 18. I won't tell you how old I am, but I'm a little bit older than this car. And uh, she stands great. Let's get into it. There's a lot of bias. I don't want to speak about just bias. I want to get into just the details. Let's start at the front of the car. We got to start at the front because to me, the front of the car is the soul to the car. Growing up, I, I, I couldn't tell you what it was, but that's just how it clicked to me. I realized different cars got different mouths, different eyes, different personality, and it all speaks to you in the front. Front of this car is notorious for being called bug-eyed front. Uh, it shares that with the Subaru Impreza WRX. But it's because of these little beady eyes. These are low beams and high beams. Back in the 90s, they had their own individual lens. Uh, these are not HIDs, they're just standard bulbs, uh, but they do more than okay of a good job. Um, I haven't had any issues with them at night, so as far as safety, they do a good job. Um, notice this nice little sporty mouth. It's all built into the bumper cover. This is all original. Same with the lights that start at the front and end on the side. Siamese on the other. Those are your signals. A lot of thought is put into this. It's like you got to imagine in the 1990s, this is the third generation of this Integra. Designers and scientists had to come together to bring both function and form. And they did a very good job here. The personality of this car to me is a female who's probably of the insect gene. You know, to me, cars can be animals. They can be bugs. Uh, they can be fantastic beasts that don't exist. It can be humans. It can be a guy. It can be a girl. Uh, this one is Susan. I call her Susan uh, because without shouting out too much the original owner, who I don't know personally, I just do my homework before I buy a car, the original owner was named Susan. And she was a little lady who drove this car for 20-odd years and took miraculous good care of it. So thank you, Susan. And you get to carry your name on forever through this vehicle that I hope stays with me until I'm an old man that I can pass it on to my next of kin of sorts. Susan, you do a good job, baby. Let's show her engine. 
as I go through the car, I, I'm not going to specifically, like, rate anything. I'm just going to review it, you know. That's just the whole point of this. It's just to really talk about it, get into the details of it, anything I can share. I'm not an expert on vehicles. My background uh, is that I started with used Hondas as my first automotive sources. I had a 95 Accord V6. She was my queen. And in that time that I owned it, it was when the Honda game was at its highest point, if I have to say. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of people driving Hondas. So a lot of information to be shared. And these Integras were actually available cars. In today's age, they're pretty impossible to find. And everything has to do with this right here. This 1.8 liter dual overhead cam VTEC, inline four, fuel injected, five speed manual hooked into the bottom of it, engine and transmission is really, really an engineering accomplishment. This car at the time, being the third generation, this is the first year of it, the 94. At the time, the Type R engine, which boosted a little bit more power than this, this stands at 170 horsepower, roughly 129 torque. The Type R engine boosted a little bit more, I want to say in the mid-range of 180s, with a slightly higher red line of like 8 and a little bit of a line. This red line's at 8. The Type R engine at the time had the most horsepower per liter. So you got to imagine... This was the 90s. This was the time where heavy cars was a thing. You had the G GTRs. You had Nissan with a bunch of other ladies, like the Fair Lady 300. Heavy cars, heavy cars. Turbo-injected cars. You had Toyota with the Supra and the Celica GT4. Heavy, heavy cars. Amazing cars, but heavy. This car, although it had 170 horsepower in 1994 only weighed less than 2,700 pounds. When you put that power to weight ratio together and a skilled driver is in the cockpit, this car could tear people apart. In the 90s, it was killing the circuit. Uh, the Integra Type R at the time was winning some super big championships. Um, it's what gave this engine its name. So what ended up happening was Everybody wanted it, and people that couldn't afford it stole them. So over time, these cars were stolen and beat up on and raced and cut and pasted. That they just don't exist anymore. And, and if they do, it, it's, it's not going to look like this. I, like, I need you to take a real good look here, man. This is all original. Except, of course, for that Skunk 2 header set up, 4 to 1. Met with a Skunk 2 catback exhaust. And of course, the Skunk 2 coilovers. Outside of that, this is all original. And I thank God for having it. Because it was just meant to be. Let's get into the engine though. 170 horses, 130 torque. You're probably thinking your mom's station wagon or your Hyundai Tucson has more power than that. It's true, it's true. But it's not as fun as this to drive. This is an extremely fun engine. It redlines at 8,000. Uh, the, the gearbox is super, super close-knit. Um, I personally owned a Civic Type R, the 2022, and I cannot find a difference in the feel of gearbox or clutch between the two cars. They, they just made something great and just kept replicating it and added more power to these engines. Um, but as it sits, the 1.8 5-speed manual, non-LSD, the Type R has the LSD. Um, this is probably one of my favorite um, setups to drive. The Type R is extremely fun, but like, let, let's be honest, in like everyday traffic and everyday um, abilities to hit a corner, it's, it's just too fast of a car. Like, unless you have time to go to the track, I would take this Integra GSR any day. Oh, let's not shut it like that. Let's get it from the middle. Back to the side. 
You know, this car has an amazing, amazing profile. It's notorious. People see these cars and they break heads. It stands at just about over 14 feet, which is pretty interesting because when you're inside of it, it doesn't feel that long. It feels like a very tiny car, but it's pretty long at 14 feet. Uh, you got 15 inch wheels from the factory five spoke. Um, I love that it's 15 inches because in today's world, I don't think you need anything bigger. Um, the tires were Michelin's, but right now we're sitting on some Aspen Tourings. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to cringe when I watch this video a year from now that I could, could not believe I was driving this car with these kind of tires on them. No offense to Aspen, but do you, do you even know what Aspen Touring is? You don't. It's, it's not something you want to have on your Acura Integra GSR. But that's where they sit. Uh, all originals you can see from the side mirrors to the doors to the fenders to the quarter. Um, just love, love the sit of this car. As you can see, it is slightly lowered. I would say about an inch. The coilovers, I didn't want to overdo it over in the East Coast. The Northeast is not a fun place to drop cars. A lot of people do it. Much respect to the culture. Just look at those body lines. Come on. What do you see that has body lines like this anymore? Nothing. I don't think it exists. Like, it's sitting in front of an M8 competition, and I'm sorry, but they, they both look great. Like, I, I, I can't say that I want to drive the M8 so much badly, so much more than I want to drive the Integra. Like, they, they just are both good cars. Like, I, I didn't mean to put that BMW back there, but this is just a good comparison of how good, good design goes forever, man. Come on. Be rear. Um, I would love to show you more of the rear, including the bumper, but my license plate is there. I forgot to cover it. Uh, get it. Let's just let's just see that little emblem right there, Integra, just like it shares in the front. That's so cool. Dual overhead cam, VTEC. Only if you know, you know, right? Like the average person doesn't even know what that means. What it means is you have dual cam gears, which means dual cam shaft in the head, and that is where you produce the continued motion that started with the combustion in the intake manifold. You know, your block has your pistons, your head has your valves and valve springs. But this rear, man, iconic, iconic. Damn it, keep showing the plate. Ignore that, iconic. I really appreciate the sport sport spoiler from the factory. I really appreciate this is a full hatch, so it does have the rear windshield wiper. I I really appreciate the view going into the rear cockpit. Let's take a look at what the rear trunk is like. Cause you're probably like, oh, this little tiny car. What if I want to go to the grocery store? You know what I would say about the grocery store in this car? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because this trunk is extremely spacious. It surprises me all the time, honestly, how you can create a sporty car that is extremely good on gas. Uh, I think this does, like, combine 25 miles. Um, highway, like, 30. Like, come on. And this is all redlining at 8,000. You're not going to get those MPGs redlining at 8,000. But the fact you have an ability, yes, this is a grocery getter. This trunk fits as much as my Lexus GX460. Um, the, the, the best part is, too, when you get to go to, like, a supermarket in a, in a classic car, you get to run into a lot of um, educated folks on the culture. You get to see, you know, like a lot of cool guys and ladies that like really, really give your car a nod because they realize what you got is special. So it's fun. You know, you get to get your groceries. You get to make a few people smile. The kids ask you, oh, what is that? And you're just like, oh, yeah, it's just a GSR. You know, let them do their own research on what exactly it is that you got. Let's hit up the interior of this bad boy. I promise you, as I 
further my venture into car reviews that we will get better camera angles and so on. For now it's a little rough and raw. Let's get up in this bad boy. From this old JDM 1990C to the original floor mats that has a huge print on it because I did that by mistake. I mean this car is just like one of a kind. It's amazing that I'm six feet tall and I had to test to see if I can still fit four six feet tall individuals in this car. And you could. Two in the front, two in the back. Um, I personally drive this car with nobody in it and it looks like Susan did the same thing. You know, my girl Susan, the original owner, just look at these rear seats, man. Nobody ever sat back there. Um, another thing I realized is nobody sat in the passenger seat. I, I'm, I'm the only dumb dumb that, you know, went ahead and stained the, the carpet, which I'm a clean. The reason I realized that nobody sat in this car, on the passenger side at least, is because of this. See those little teeth on the bottom of the mat? When you flip the mat and take a close look at them, none of them are dented. There is no sign that people put their feet on top of these mats. That means nobody sat there. Let's get inside. It's a little chilly. I would love to blow my nose right now, but I can't because it'll probably make a really nasty sound on the mic. So please don't mind me if you keep hearing me sniffle. Alright, 6 feet tall, 175 pounds, I fit perfect in this car. My brother's a little larger, but he can still fit in this car. I'm not going to say his specs, but he's much larger than me. He's a little bit tighter, but he can very well still drive this. Me at six feet, though, I'm going to say this is ideal. And perfect is for usually a smaller man. I'm going to say like a 5'8 guy, 160 pounds. That would be perfect for him. Susan, you can tell, was a small lady because there is no signs of wear in the bolsters. These right here always rip apart on both sides. And there's no sign of wear on these bolsters. Uh, these are bucket seats, but very subtle bucket seats. Not like bucket seats that are like, oh, well... Is that like a ricer? No, this is a tastefully done economy sports car. Yeah, I, I would put it in both classes. Um, the steering wheel, vinyl leather, the dash, vinyl leather, the door panels, vinyl leather. You know, this, this isn't real leather, but it has lasted the ages. This is a 28-year-old car. Uh, when I bought it, you could see the seller definitely went through it and put some nice, like, salad dressing all on this to make it shine. But even since, it's been like more than half a year, and you can see it start to fade, and the original vinyl is looking beautiful. Uh, the glove box has ample size. This one does come with the original manual. has the code for the radio, a whole bunch of cool little details. Uh, the factory radio, still in this car, come on now. Got the COVID mask, you know, you can't leave home without it. You know, um, I try not to smoke in this car, but sometimes, man, it calls for it. Got to be very careful, though. You got to ask the wife how crazy I am about people being careful in this car. And it, it's for a reason. Um, back to this gearbox, as we were mentioning earlier, this five-speed manual is just amazing. I mean, the way it just comes in and out of gear, you know, the balancing is like super, super original OEM. This clutch has a nice bounce to it. It just lets right off. Like, I think you could teach a nine year old how to drive this car if they're tall enough. Like, this is the ideal car for a new driver, um, an experienced driver, um, everybody, young, old, male, female, homo or hetero. This is for every single body, honestly. But again, you don't want to be too big driving this car, I have to be honest. Not too tall, not too wide. It's not going to be too comfortable. Um, these little, like, original 1990s JDM signal and, like, light mechanisms. Man, just the sound, you know? Click. You hear that? And, like, it's just so great. As old as this car is, you know, it really does have still all that nice click, you know? It, it, like, it's just made right. It's just made right. Listen, listen, listen. I really hope you can hear that. God, it's just amazing, amazing. 
I want to walk over just to show you the dash. I don't want to pull the camera though. Give me a second. I promised I wouldn't make any nasty noises and I just made one, sorry. All right, flipping it around here. Oh man. Before the dash, let us not forget there is a sunroof in this car. That is so cool. The Type R didn't have the sunroof. Uh, I remember I met somebody who had a GSR and he was the only owner of the original. And I had to ask him, like, why'd you get the GSR instead of the Type R? The Type R is much faster, much cooler, much more expensive today. He said, well, first of all, I never plan on selling this car. I didn't care what it was going to be worth in 100 years. Still has it. Second of all, just wanted a sunroof. <laughs> I said, man, you are so chill, bro. It was like a thousand or $2,000 difference to get a GSR less versus the Type R. You said, I got to save some money and get a sunroof. I was like, wow, man, good for you. This, this, this dash is just so timeless. Like, I, I like getting in new cars because they got, like, the new dash and, like, all these trinkets and, like, super cool stuff going on. But, man, there's nothing like hopping in this car and just getting a fresh smile because of the simplicity. Nothing you don't need. So you got your temperature, which, by the way, on this car is always way less than half. It's like a quarter. Runs pretty cold. You got your RPMs redlining at that beautiful 8,000. You know, I've, I've, I've ridden inline for um, super bikes, hyper bikes. And I got to say on the highway, third and fourth gear, just chilling, man. Like at the ratio, like, like an inline four is an inline four. The difference is this way, 2,600 something pounds. And it's a 1.8 where a bike only weighs like 500 something pounds. And it's like a, a point nine eight, you know, and they're all under like a thousand cc, like they're right under cusp. But the way they handle, the way the ratio, the way the the jerky jerkness, this car is so much fun to just keep in the gears on the highway. Um, I have not topped this car out. Um, I have no idea what it what it'll top out at. I'm gonna say like one twenty probably. <laughs> it's not a very fast car. <sighs> but speaking of not being very fast. We're being slow. Let's drive it. It is winter out here, and I forgot to fill my tank before I put this car in storage. Let's go ahead and do that. Hey. Uh, before I do that, let me put away my tripod. You know, I'm working with a staff of one here. Don't want to leave the tripod. Yeah, handy dandy tripod. I got a feeling this tripod's gonna get a lot of use. Shout out to the wife. Stole this from her. But yeah, take your tripod. Like, sure. I thought she was gonna give me a fight. <laughs> She's like, go ahead. Have fun. I said, thank you. All right. To the gas station we go. But I gotta blow my nose. Please remove your headphones. I don't want you to feel disgusted. So I just can't take this anymore. I gotta say, you you get on a live stream, and you think everything is just smooth and like I got all the ideas. <sighs> so sorry, but I couldn't have accounted for having a runny nose. So please excuse me while we take a little stroll to the gas station in the 1994 Integra GSR. So, so far, you know, we, we went to the bonnet in front of the car. Wait, silence, let's hear it turn on. You hear that click? Like, come on, bro. It's just so, so 90s. Oh, yeah. Love the way she cuts on. Fill her up. I'm on it. She's about to get filled up, all right? Oh, just listen to that hum. 
I had to take out the earphone because these Bose, shout out to Bose, are just so good. I canceled that sound. It's pretty hard to drive a manual car without hearing things. But we got sound. No. Oh, what? Whew. Should we give her a rev? So yeah, we uh, covered the bonnet of the car, the engine transmission, uh, we hit the side up, the side is just so beautiful, uh, we hit the, the, the rear, you know, we have discovered that a little tiny car can actually hold a lot of groceries, as much as a GX460. We hit the interior, uh, we find out this car has a sunroof, a whole lot of vinyl leather that lasts the ages. Now we're going to drive it. I think it's real easy though. Because it is a relic. And we don't want to crash the relic, do we? Oh, wait. And I forgot. It's sunglass time. Oh, yeah. Gotta love these speed humps before you leave the little, little garage. Oh, yeah. Scrape City. Oh, it's dropped an inch and it still scrapes, man. Things in New York are not just, are just conveniently not placed. To, conveniently placed to make it uncomfortable to drive a lower car. So we rev it again. Oh, green light. Oh no, don't stick me here. Wow, the amount of traffic. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> this is not going to be a very spirited drive. But at least we can see that the car moves. It's not just a car that is um, it's just there for looks. Oh, wait, we're, we're moving. We might get second gear. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Going 20 miles an hour. It's not a fast car. It's a fun car. Say it again. But again, th this gearbox is just made right, you know, I... I, I I had my Type R for six months. So I got a chance to put like 4,000 miles on it. I got to get real comfortable with it. The 2022 Civic car. And then when I went to this car, I was like thinking to myself, man, am I going to enjoy it? Am I going to enjoy it? Like it's 170 horsepower versus 306. The, the torque on the Type R, I can't remember, but it's, 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 it's up there. It's just a way more powerful car. And yo... The first drive in this car, it had a busted lower um, control arm bushing, had like a failed tie rod, uh, the coilovers were the original coilovers, which had like a little bit of play in them. Even with all of that, the engine and transmission was so solid. This gearbox felt so right that right away I said, I'm buying this car. I drove pretty far to get it. And at any point, I could have said, nah, this ain't right for me. You know, I, I, I could have had that taste of a really fast car in, in my mind. And this wouldn't have worked out. But the moment the gearbox met my hand, clutched my leg, the moment I drove it, I said, yo, this car is going to outlive me, son. Because this car is fire. It doesn't matter who you are, you're going to enjoy it. And the same could be said for, for a lot of 90s Japanese cars. I got nothing against American cars, nothing against Euro cars. They're all great. Every car could be great. Not so much American cars in the 90s. <laughs> but these Japanese cars in the 90s, man, they just had it right. They had it right. And it shows. When you go into a 2022 Civic R... You jump out of it and jump into a 94 Integra, the first year, the third gen, which never changed. Looked the same, the whole gen, 94 to 01. It shows that they made something good and just kept it. Go figure. Go figure. You could do something right and just keep doing it. Who knew that's a, a marketing strategy? It's not about a marketing strategy. It's about what's, what's right. 
And it's giving the people what they need, not what they want. When you can look past what somebody needs and just give them what they what they you look past somebody wants and give them what they need. That is different, and that's why I'm always gonna be a Honda guy. I drive a Lexus too. I'm also a Lexus guy, but in my heart, number one, never forget the Honda, the beautiful Honda. And here I am, years later from that original '95 Accord V6, still driving a Honda. But now, only on the weekend. <laughs> Pulling into the gas station now. It's 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 a full gas station, as they always are. And to end this video in a sec. I want to say bless. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.